My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show how to effectively manage your tasks and your time as a software developer. Because everybody has some sort of to-do list and there are tons of to-do applications um, out there and especially in these times the more freedom we have over our, how we spend our day over our time the more necessity also we have to organize ourselves also as regular software developers and the truth is nobody really likes to use exhaustive uh, to-do applications which are cumbersome to use and all that stuff and you can come up with a lot of lot of um, apps or stack uh, how to manage it and you of course you could create your uh, create your own ones and I've done so as well but I want to show you that it's much more about some principles to follow how to effectively manage your, your time and how to get well more pragmatic and effective what you're doing and it sounds like a very boring topic I know but it's actually very helpful once you somewhat get better at organizing yourself. And what I want to show you is, first of all, a super simplistic approach that uses no other application of, of program or something like that at all. It actually uses your command line and a bunch of files. Because if you know me, I spend a lot of time on the command line and I use this a lot. And first of all, um, we don't have to be very fancy uh, when we manage our tasks or our time. Because first of all, we need to think, okay, what is it that we would like to do? right and instead of having these huge to-do lists with 50 plus entries what I like to have are actually to-do lists that have a limited scope a very limited scope of just a day ideally or maybe a week or a sprint cycle but limited to a certain um, time and what you can do then and I will show you again very basic things um, you can do something like well just have some to-dos for this day right for today and maybe you notice the shortcut I used to create the, the date right so this is you know super simple I basically have a list that can be a plain text file to say do this do that do something else and then first of all what I would like to do well I look through all these things and then I think about well today today only has so and so many hours do I get everything done and if I have 50 plus entries that's not really realistic so first of all, I need to think what is the most important and then maybe you sort them by what you want to do, right? So what is the most important? And then do that maybe also first that you get that done uh, definitely. And then, and this is now just some plain text syntax that you might use. Then what is also helpful to just keep a history, like a done list to which you basically put all these things, you literally cross them out or you could use some sort of syntax, it really doesn't matter. Um, and you could use like a dot and then something like a check mark if you've done that, whatever you prefer. And then you move them down. Why? Because then if we save that file and close it, afterwards we just see what we did today. So then we see, oh, in that file, do this, do that, do something else, and all of that is done. Or you cross it out and leave it if you didn't get to it. So it sounds almost too simple to, to explain it in that way, but this I think already helps a lot. We don't need any fancy programs and this is so much more helpful than to see if I open up a to-do application why I simply get overwhelmed by just looking at it because I see these 50 plus things that I haven't yet done. So in that way that helps us. And also while we're developing, while we're programming, it doesn't distract us much if we right now have this thought like oh i must not forget to do this right and then if that happens while i'm developing so right now i actually want to focus i don't want to get distracted and look at my to-do list but for example i could do something like um you know add this super important thing to my to-do list and that's it and enter and it's gone and I don't even see anything. Well, I wouldn't use it as such. I would have something like a script that does exactly this for today's to-do list. And then this will be added. And then at the end of the day, I go through it and see, oh, actually this needs to go here or there or somewhere else, right? And then I can keep that. And if afterwards, that is my history, if afterwards my project manager comes and say, hey, by the way, Sebastian, what did you do the whole week or month or whatever, you say, well, simple, I just did all of that, right? And then you 
naturally keep the history, but also you don't get distracted by all these things that we constantly have on our plate because you literally limit the scope for tomorrow or next week or whatever. And you see, it really doesn't have to be fancy. It helps already to have a bunch of plain text files and to just go with that. And then have a very basic approach to maybe sync them to some other device, second computer, whatever you might need, right? You could also use some, uh, some example that you can edit from your smartphone and so on and so forth, but nothing fancy. So I think that your plain text editor helps you a lot already. So this is actually the pro approach that I was using first that I, I was using uh, quite for a long time. But then there is also another principle that I would like to follow, which is to own your time or to own your calendar. What does that mean? Well, if you would usually reserve a time for a so so important semi important meeting in your calendar, it seems like you know, this is the single most important thing because you have time there in your calendar. And this is not always the case for us developer uh, developers, because we would like to spend our time and things that actually add value. And I want to have it in the other way around that you say, what are the most important things I want to work on, like the th first list in my first thing in my list. And I want to allocate time, I want to block time as if that were an important meeting by because it's actually even more important. And for that, I also, you know, I, I used SKR to draw some timeline to say, okay, from eight to 10, I'll do this. And then from 10 to 11, I do that. But that is, of course, kind of cumbersome. And you can also use um, some sort of a notebook if you want to like a paper book. Also, some people do that. But that is the reason why I ultimately um, created an application uh, that I'm also uh, sharing uh, in another video. And I want to create a little bit more stuff um, about that, which is called Day Captain. So I started creating that just for myself for this approach. Uh, but now it's, it's also publicly available, uh, which is just, you know, very, very similar that approach what I just showed you with just a little bit, you know, fancier UI, but the same mechanism. Why? Because, you know, I would like to use such a timeline where I say where I see, for example, everything that's going on, like in your Google Calendar, but you know, who really would like to wheel their mouse around to edit Google Calendar with the 20 things you would like to work on then and then and then because it's way too cumbersome. What I like about the approach in the command line is that I literally spend five minutes or less to do this and then I'm done. And I use, you know, a nice editor, I might use Vim uh, editing or whatever have you, and then it's very fast. And what I created here is a similar approach where it's completely usable via keyboard shortcuts and with an effective uh, keyboard usability concept where you say, okay, it's actually the same. I can go around here with, you know, like a video game or like Vim for, for us developers where I say, well, please just, you know, reassign this um, or go to the timeline, make it shorter, make it longer. And for the next day, if I say, well, that's exactly the same approach, if I want to say, do this, uh, do that, do uh, something else. And I can, you know, of course, tag it with some uh, with some nice colors and some projects and uh, things like that. And then I'd say, okay, I just want to assign some time, for example, from seven to eight, or maybe seven to nine, or I want to move it around and things like this. So it's actually very fast. While I'm while I'm talking, I can do this to move these things around. Why? Otherwise, it becomes just too annoying to edit all of that. So, so we've seen that and probably have had a similar um, experience where you would like to, you know, use your calendar um, to put in all these things, it would be super cool, but then the usability gets in the way. So this is why I created um, that approach that I'm actually using uh, myself now. And then um, it's kind of straightforward to create or th these are literally how my how my days look and um, to create things like that where we just follow all these principles and where it's a straightforward approach, but usable where I can fill my timeline with my stuff. But that's just uh, what I'm using right now. But just again, to summarize it, what we should do, we should first of all, use a very pragmatic approach, like the one in your command line using files, or uh, feel free to, uh, to try uh, to give day captain a try, where we are able to limit the scope of our task lists, like, for example, give me just a daily task list or a weekly one or a sprint cycle or whatever you want to have. And then fill that deliberately 
by prioritizing. You will see that your lifetime is limited, your day only has 24 hours, and then you have to uh, spend them as such and prioritize and sort them, what you want to work on first, what uh, gives you the most value, and then also strictly assign time for it. So really block time in your calendar to say, now I will only do this, nothing else, nothing else can distract me, there's no meeting right now. Then also it helps a lot to keep a history, to just say, okay, what did I do last week? Well, give me a very basic list to go through it. Um, with your plain text files, with uh, such a program, this helps a lot. And then over time, we can also re uh, review it and iterate to get better. To say, okay, what did I plan yesterday actually? Oh, these 10 tasks. Of course, I only did half of them. Well, maybe tomorrow, if I look through this, I only plan so and so much. And taking then really five minutes at the end of the day to just wrap it all up. What did I do today? Which issues did I close? Which bugs did I fix? And all that stuff. Write it down. Very basic. That's literally two minutes. And then think about what do I want to work on tomorrow? What is the most important thing? Write that down first. And then, you know, all these other things until your day is literally full. Plan them. Um, into your timeline, assign some time, keep some buffer as well. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can, re, uh, you can readjust it later on, doesn't matter. But if you assign that time, if you block some time, then it's more likely that you actually will work on it and not just uh, be distracted and get into the default mode of checking emails and all that stuff. So I think that already helps a lot to own your time and you can be very simple, very pragmatic. Again, I used plain text files uh, for a long time. I think this already helps so much more than a very sophisticated program that is not very easily usable, right? We are developers, we would like to use our keyboards. We are super fast when editing code, but why should we you know, deal with some programs that are not that uh, nice to use? So I think that's just important and helps you a lot, although the topic sounds a little bit boring uh, to plan your day. So if you would um, like to learn more about Day Captain, you can watch that other video. And other than, than that, I hope this was helpful. If you liked the video, I'd really appreciate a like. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.